Welcome to Fitness Friday, combining drums, music, and healthy lifestyle. With today's host, Brendan Buckley. Today's episode, Top 10 Healthy Tips. Welcome. Welcome. You're here. You're up. You're awake. It's nine o'clock in the morning here in um, in LA. So I'm not sure how many drummers are going to be tuning in. All right. So this is DW Fitness Friday. It's a new show they're putting on. This is episode number five. Uh, thanks to them for inviting me to host guest host this week. So what we're going to be talking about for the next 30 to 60 minutes, however long it takes, is fitness tips. Uh, when I'm on the road, uh, you'd be surprised how often the band members and I, we all talk about, you know, fitness and everyone wants advice and everyone shares tokens of wisdom. And I figured, uh, when DW asked me to do this, I would just make a little collection of the things that we normally chat about and, uh, list them in a, in a, in an order that might help you guys, give you uh, some things you can take away and use in your life. Um, great. So I'm going to start with number one, nutrition. Nutrition is a topic that always comes up when I'm on the road, on, on a tour bus, in catering. Uh, I read a lot about nutrition. I love studying about nutrition. And uh, it's kind of crazy that uh, whatever study you read, you'll also read something totally contradicting it. Uh, so the, the, the jury's still out with a lot of things. You might read that uh, egg yolks are bad. And then next thing, you, uh, you know, scientists now say egg yolks are good. And you're like, damn it. But so you have to actually pick and choose um, what information you want to believe in uh what information you want to try it's a lot of experimentation uh and also everyone's body's different we have different blood types different genetics and certain things work for some people and don't work for other people so taking that into account uh here's some broad nutrition uh suggestions let's see we all know to avoid fried foods right fried foods normally bad uh avoiding sugar sugar is kind of bad for you that is bad for you and um and uh i mean you can have a birthday piece of birthday cake on someone's birthday but just don't make sugar part of your regular diet throughout the day um avoid cigarettes i think people know that smoking looks cool but it's kind of bad for you um so here's a better one eat plants every time you're having a meal if you have three meals a day if you have five meals a day, whatever it is, look at the plate and say, are there any plants on this plate? And that could be a strawberry, that could be a piece of celery, a salad, um, lettuce and tomatoes on your hamburger, whatever it is. Make sure there's some kind of plant going on in your, your, your food, every meal that you have. So, yeah, fruits and veggies are still good for you and not just one salad in the afternoon but throughout the day if you can make sure you're eating lots of plants fantastic for you and you know make sure you're having some type of protein nuts are great fish is great if you do eat fish um you know you can get protein powders now and all sorts of things um proteins are kind of better for you than carbs they say so and uh, there are things like there was a list that was really popular several years ago called the 10 superfoods. So if you can kind of make sure you're having all of these in your diet, salmon, almonds, berries, garlic, spinach, green tea, olive oil, broccoli, ginger, and red wine. You just put all that in one smoothie and just mix it up and then you're set. Do not do that, that's a terrible idea. And um, let's see, that's that's it for nutrition. Uh, DW asked me to put together some recipes for some smoothies. I do have like probably one or two smoothies a day uh, just to make, cause it's just easy to uh, ingest a lot of good food 
in one gulp. So here's a, sm a morning smoothie you can have. Raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, some kefir yogurt for your probiotics, cinnamon, and collagen powder. Collagen powder is something that I've been turned on to recently that's supposed to be good, supposed to be good for your ligaments and tendons, your joints. Um, and as drummers, and as drummers that are aging, you know, it's very good to take care of your joints. So apparently collagen powder is something we should all be um, putting into our diet at some point. And, and then there's also a protein smoothie I'll have in the afternoon as kind of like a lunch supplement sometimes. This one is a chocolate protein powder, a scoop of either peanut uh, or almond butter, a banana, almond milk, uh, some pieces of coconut, and cacao nibs and you just grind all that up and that's just really healthy source of protein um and yeah as long as you're making sure that you're um you know just making sure you're eating lots of plants you don't have to be vegetarian but that's a really good thing to do uh and also when you look at food if you're looking at a menu or you're, you're deciding what you're going to eat or you're going food shopping or something like that. Um, just think of everything as fuel that you're putting into your sports car. You are a sports car and, uh, and you're not going to put mud in it in the gas tank. You're not going to put uh, toxic waste in the gas tank. You're thinking I'm going to put some really good gasoline in my gas tank. I'm going to put some great oil in the oil tank. So, uh, your body's kind of the same way. I saw something, uh, <laughs> a 99% red wine smoothie. I like it. Um, so uh, it, I heard something. someone say this once. Imagine you are given one car in your life. You're born and someone gives you um, whatever, uh, some kind of uh, fancy Corvette. And you have that, you're basically going to have that car for your whole life. 80 years, 90 years, whatever you're probably going to take care of that car very well because you know this is the car I'm going to have my whole life. I'm not going to lease it and get a new car every five years. I'm not going to sell it and buy another one 10 years from now. This is the car I have to repair and prevent from getting into accidents and get regular tune-ups uh, for it's in my entire life. And if you treat your body that way, like this is my only automobile for the rest of my life, I'm going to try to take care of it so you're going to start thinking about what you're putting in it uh, and making correct choices, um, getting the proper fuel for your body. And there we go. Enough about nutrition. Let's move on. Number two, intermittent fasting. It sounds scary. Don't worry about it. I'm going to work you through this. So a long time ago, I used to do these kind of liquid fasts where I would go maybe 10 days drinking nothing but lemonade to try to cleanse the body and kind of give the uh, digestive system a little bit of a break. Although I thought it was great at the time, it really helped me, I like it. It's not for everyone. Uh, it's It can be a little bit difficult, challenging, a little brutal. And um, so after I did that for a couple of years and I saw the benefits and I'm like, I think I'm kind of done with this, I switched to and a form of intermittent fasting where I would just take one day a month, like say the fourth Sunday of every month, and I wouldn't eat any solid food. I would just have tea, water, um, consomme soups, just for one day. Again, just to give your uh, body a little break, flush out the system. And then I started reading about a, an even better form of fasting, which is just uh overnight fasting which is very simple it's don't eat anything between dinner and breakfast don't have a midnight snack uh don't fill up your stomach before going to bed and digesting throughout the night so if you think you're going to eat breakfast at 9 a.m then stop eating at 9 p.m you know have your last meal and say i'm done for the night and uh, just give your body that time overnight to empty its stomach and to kind of slow down. And it's like we we're like we're a factory, and at a certain hour, all the workers leave, and we shut down the power, and we say we'll see you tomorrow morning. 
That's what we're doing with our digestive system. And uh, it allows us to have better sleep. So they say, jury's out. But uh, it allows you to have better dreams. Um, and you shouldn't have a full stomach when you're sleeping. It's apparently not that good for you. So, um, yeah. And, and some people say, oh, I can't do that. I need to eat. I need to eat. I need well, first try, if you, if you really feel hungry at 10 p.m. or whatever, just have a tall glass of water. That usually fixes it. But if you're really in the ha habit of having munchies, um, then, you know, have something that's very good for you and easy to digest, like a banana or a bunch of berry, a handful of berries or something, or maybe maybe even a yogurt or something like that. Very light that you can have if you really need that snack before going to bed. Don't have, you know, the T-bone steak um, or anything complex. So uh, this is really good for musicians who battle like that post show. I just got off stage. Now I want to have buffalo chicken wings and pad thai. Um, it's we want to celebrate when the, the show is over. But, you know, you get on that tour bus and there's pizza and Chinese food and then you have to get into a bunk and you do this night after night for three months. It's not that good for you. So that would be my second suggestion is to try not to eat after dinner and go uh, and make it all the way to breakfast and then have a great breakfast. And you're, over time, you'll get used to it and your body will thank you. Let's move on to number three, hydrate, hydrate, water. So the first thing I do every morning when I wake up is I have a tall glass of room temperature water. Uh, it's sitting on my nightstand. So I wake up, uh, alarm goes off and boom, I, I, I chug a glass of water. Um, it's supposed to, and I do that about an hour before eating my actual breakfast. So just allows your body to hydrate itself. Uh, you're getting water into it. Water is the most important thing we should be having throughout the day. So they say, and, um, and also I drink water before I go to bed too, not directly before I go to bed. Cause then I'll probably have to pee in like 15 minutes, but like an hour before I go to bed, I also have a maybe a, a cup of uh, chamomile tea and then a glass of water or something. Again, making sure that my body has enough water so we don't get dehydrated. Uh, dehydration is a problem. People don't know it. They don't know they have it. And uh, if you're drinking water throughout the day, you're just magically preventing that issue. Um, and water, if you don't like water, there's other things you could have, but water is pretty healthy for you. Uh, uh, the opposite would be like Coca-Cola or something. No offense, Coca-Cola, but that's not a really good beverage to hydrate. Um, so, you know, stick to things like water is very good and then coconut water. And then the, down the line, you might want to do veggie juices. And then next would be maybe fruit juices. They have a lot of sugar. So that's why I say veggie juices might be better for you. And, um, uh, yeah, so that's it. Drink water. Next, we're going to do exercise. This is, uh, along with nutrition, exercise is the other half of, like, the most important things that you should be thinking about when you're thinking about getting healthier or staying fit. Am I eating right? And am I doing some form of exercise? So... I love talking about exercise. I read about it all the time and uh, lots of journals and studies and different techniques. Um, a couple of years back, I got into this whole notion of functional fitness. Uh, that would be something like, it's not just about lifting weights or building muscles to make yourself look, you know, bulky on a beach or something. It's about functional fitness would be doing things to make you function better throughout your day or throughout your life, uh, building your body so it works better. Um, and if you think about it, like think about like what are our bodies like built to do in nature, you know, uh, where, you know, uh, for survival. Can you climb a tree? Can you run away from a lion? Can you hunt? Can you carry things? You know, when you're building a, 
a cabin or something, all these things, carrying, lifting, running, climbing, um, all these things are, are things we needed for survival. Not necessarily bench presses, though bench presses can be used to build certain parts of your uh, functionality. But the more, more important is we're thinking, how, do we, how does our body work in nature? And from there, we, we, we develop um, exercise programs. So we have to think about things like cardio. That doesn't mean get on, getting on an elliptical machine and just going shoot, 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 shoot for 45 minutes. Cardio is like, you know, getting your heart rate going and then being able to do exercises with your heart rate up. So I like jump, jump rope, riding a bike. That rowing machine that you see at gym sometimes is killer for uh, cardio. Um, going for a hike up and down staircases is great. Um, running, jogging, uh, speed walking, if you like doing that thing. And um, yeah, if you're walking somewhere and there's a choice between taking an escalator and a flight of stairs, take the flight of stairs. It's a very simple thing you could do. Um, and uh, there's also explosive movements. That's a term I learned a couple years ago, but you know, you can uh, do exercises that have cardio built in. Burpees, people hate burpees, it's a funny name, but that's like, imagine you, you squat down, you do a push up, and then you jump up in the air. And then you get down, you do a push up, and then you jump up in the air. You do 10 of those, you're breathing like crazy, and it's a fantastic exercise to build cardio. And again, it's a little more realistic than just getting on an elliptical machine and going like this. You know, we don't do that necessarily throughout life, but we do pick up things and walk and jump and climb and do the other things. So the other side of um, exercise might be, other than just doing cardio, is some kind of resistance training, like weightlifting, bands, isometric holds. All this means is like, um, like we're challenging our muscles as opposed to challenging our heart. Cardio will be, you know, you're challenging your heart. Resistance training is challenging your muscles, tendons, joints, ligaments, things like that, to slowly build themselves up, toughen themselves up over time. So the, the biggest rule you can think of is just pick up heavy things, carry heavy things. I mean, that could be dumbbells at a gym or, or bench presses, or that could be kettlebells or whatever, even body weight exercises. If you do squats or uh, push-ups, pull-ups, you're still picking up heavy things. So um, there, I read once, it said, make sure you're doing five basic movements every day. That is the, the five basic movements are the push, the pull, the lift. So we're lifting something up. Oh, the carry, you carry it around. And the hinge. Hinge means uh, do something where you're bending, you know, hinging. So if we're pushing, if you go to the gym and you're like, I don't know what to do. Just make sure you push something, you pull something, you pick something up, you walk with it, and you bend over. And, and with proper back alignment and put it down. Those are five exercises, five movements that your body needs to do to be well-rounded. And if you're one of the people who hates exercising, I know a lot of people hate exercising, I love it, but I'm weird. Um, some people hate exercising, then it's okay. Just do something every day. That's the best advice I can give is just do something every day rather than saying, Oh, starting January, I'm going to start going to the gym seven days a week. Don't, that's not going to happen. What you really need to do is say every day, did I do some form of exercise? Did I take the dog for a walk around the block? Did I uh, go for a hike up, a, up that staircase? Did I carry seven packages of groceries in from the trunk? Uh, did I do 10 push ups or just pick at least something every day before you go to bed? just to check off the list and say, that was my exercise for the day. I make sure that every day I do something. Sometimes it's a killer two hour workout. Sometimes it's really just a couple push-ups and then I'm done. And I'm like, sorry, I feel lazy today. That's all I'm doing. That is for me, uh, the best way to keep some kind of routine going where you're always thinking about improving, um, challenging your body, staying fit. And I uh, hope I didn't lose anyone yet because we're halfway through, basically. Let's go to number five. 
hand exercises, being that we're drummers and musicians, let's go beyond the idea of just doing exercise at the gym or yoga or Pilates or something. Let's talk about our hands. Um, as drummers, these things have to be in shape. They have to be um, loose, muscularly fit, all that stuff. So besides playing with sticks in our hands on a drum set, that's the best thing you could do for your hands. There's all, all sorts of other things we can do, but the number one thing is don't forget, have sticks in your hands every day playing on snare drums and hi-hats and ride cymbals and floor toms. That's really good to get your hands in shape. Much better than playing with, you know, three pound metal drum sticks on a pad that has no rebound. That's cool too, but the end goal is to play drums well. So this is not a replacement of having wooden sticks in your hands and playing on a, on a real drum set. These are only supplements. So um, I like this thing. It's a little stress ball. You buy these everywhere. You can get them online. You can get them at uh, CVS or whatever. I sprained my thumb once uh, a couple of years ago, and that's when I started studying about you know finger sprains. And years ago, they would like tape a popsicle stick, a splint to your finger, and say, "Don't move it for a couple of weeks, and then it'll heal." The recommendation now is the is totally the opposite. When you hurt a joint, you ice it for two days or something until the swelling goes away, and then you have to start moving it immediately, even if it hurts, because the idea is you do not want to let it um, kind of solidify in an injured position. You want to flex it. So I got one of these things, and when my thumb was sprained, I would just like basically poke this thing like with my thumb and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and do all sorts of weird muscular tension things to try to heal my fingers. And then I got kind of addicted to it. So I have one in the car, I have one on my desk, and I just kind of use it to stretch my fingers and not just squeeze it like, like death grip, but I actually use my fingertips. I don't know if you call this thumb also a fingertip or a thumb tip or whatever so all sorts of things these are easy to find good for you okay you'll see these at little like hippie shops where you buy incense and stuff uh maybe flea markets these little they come in like a little asian box uh these are like pool balls with little bells in them sometimes these i've i've had these since high school i have like multiple sets of these laying around this is a great hand warm up hand exercise. So, if you don't know, there's two balls. If you bang them together, they sound like this. So, you actually want to try to avoid banging them together and you go in circles. You can go clockwise smoothly without banging them together and then go counterclockwise. La la both hands. Now that's that's like the novice uh, first level, and then you start doing it with them apart like this, and go in circles clockwise, counterclockwise. This is like the ninja level to go the other direction without banging them. So it really, and also I have a set of these in my car. Probably not smart to be doing these while you're driving. Don't recommend it. You didn't hear that from me, but um, yeah, this is fun uh, kind of meditative way to loosen up your fingers and your hands and your wrists. Ta-da! A third thing for your hands. I've had these also, these kinds of grip things since, I guess since college maybe. I don't know, some people say these aren't that good for you or are good for you, who knows? But I like using them. Uh, you can get these at like, I don't know, some sports store or whatever, these little grip exercising thingies. So I used to just do these, like I would do them 30 this direction and then 30 upside down like this. And then I would come up with other ex exercises, like you can just pull the handles together and hold. Maybe count to 10 or something and let go. As opposed to going, ga, 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 ga. Now, something else I notice is depending on the orientation of your arm, it feels different. So if I hold it at you like it's a gun, like this, 
it feels one way. If I turn it sideways, it actually feels different in my forearm and my elbow. If I turn it palm up, it also feels different. So I'll, I'll actually rotate through all these different arm positions. Hold it up toward the sky, hold it out toward the side. This one actually burns more than all of the other ones. It's holding it out sideways. Have I lost anyone yet? You guys are like, yeah, hand squeezing nonsense. Yeah, check it out. If I turn it this way, it feels different. Turn it this way, it feels different. So these are just a few things that I could offer you to try to build the muscles in your hands and loosen them up and not to replace actually using sticks, which is the best thing. But, and one more thing before we move on is also do not ignore the feet. So hands are important, but we also play drums with our feet, the pedal, feet on the pedals. So we have to loosen the ankles, make sure we're like standing on our toes and twisting our ankles around. And another thing is spread the toes apart like this, ah, and then squeeze them together and spread them out. There's a lot of tension in our feet. We wear shoes most of the day, and um, our, our hands get all this motion throughout the day, and our feet just go like this. So kind of make sure you're flexing the feet and flexing the toes, and then when you're playing those crazy foot patterns, you know, your feet will be nice and loose and, um, you know, attached to those pedals. Let's move on. The next thing, number six, stretching and flexibility. Um, so this is something I, I like to talk about, too, is um, we don't all have the same body types and we don't have to do yoga all the time to improve our flexibility and to stretch our muscles. So uh, there's a few things that I like to do. For instance, I stretch my limbs on the drum set before I even play. Uh, if I'm about to play a concert and I go up on the stage and there's three minutes until the show starts, I will actually just sit on the throne and take my arms out like this and reach them forward over the rack toms as far as I can go. And then maybe I'll reach my right hand over the floor tom and then come back and reach my left hand over the hi-hat or that side snare like this. I go up toward the sky and I reach up my right arm and reach up my left arm. And then I'll actually take both of my hands and go over the floor tom like this. And then both of my hands and go over that uh, little uh, Roland SPDSX that you have mounted over here and then if I just do this, when I go to play the drums, I feel like, wow, now I feel super, uh, like I can reach everything and I can fly around the kit. If I just sit down and start on the hi and snare, and then I feel like I'm spending the first couple songs trying to get used to the distances around me. But yeah, so that's why I normally, I get up, I sit down on the drums, I go, boom, can I reach that? Can I reach that? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Both hands this way, both hands this way up down so this is something you can do on the drum set when you're practicing or when you're about to play a show just make sure you can kind of reach everything um there's a squat that i think is a good basic move to get good at it's just um some people i've heard it called the asian squat so uh because you can see these like pictures of shaolin monk uh kids just eating bowls of rice, like in this position, just floating on an invisible footstool. So you just basically stand with your feet, shoulder width apart, maybe your toes are not forward, but just a little bit angled out like this with a fairly straight back. You just drop your butt as low as it can go without taking your heels of your feet off the ground. So your feet are flat on the ground and then you just go down as low as you can and back up again. You can go down and sit there some people can only get halfway down. Some people can go all the way down to the ground. Uh, it, it really depends on your, your hip flexibility, your knee flexibility, your ankle flexibility, your back health. But this is something that no matter how low you feel you can go and be comfortable, every version kind of is, is good. So it's a really good way to kind of loosen up so many joints in your body at the same time. 
is just a, this deep squat. So once again, you know, I just basically, uh, you can't see it, but you know, I stand here and then without taking my, my flat feet off the ground, I drop and I can go all the way down and back up again. It's really good for you. So they say, and, um, another thing I like to do is just when I'm standing, say I'm online waiting for some food at the taco shop down the street. I'm like, oh, now's a good time to do a little stretching. So I'll just actually take both hands and point my fingers toward the sky. And I'll just point one, my right hand a little higher than the left. And then point my left finger a little higher and then go back and forth like this, lengthening myself. You can also do it with your hands at your sides. So imagine I'm touching the sides of my thighs and I reach my right hand toward my knee. My left hand is on my hip. Then I switch. My left hand goes toward my knee and my right hand is on my hip. And I go back and forth. This is really good for lengthening your spine. Gravity crunches us down like this throughout the day. So we wanna always try to see if we can get taller, straighter. Um, and we should try to avoid what's called static stretching. Static stretching is when you see someone like they're about to go for a jog and then they put their, their leg up on a uh, ra railing and they start bending toward their foot and then they go for a jog and they pull their hamstring. Static stretching is basically trying to stretch your body as far as it goes when your muscles are still cold. What studies have shown over time, studies, is that warming up slowly or stretching with warm muscles is better than doing it when your muscles are super cold. Like you just hopped out of bed and then you're gonna try to touch your toes. Maybe do it slowly, repetitions. So I um, believe in, um, you know, not static stretching, but warming up. Warming up your body the same way you warm up your hands. Um, how are we doing on time? 9.30, cool, let's move on then. The next thing I like to talk about is posture, kind of along the line of what we're talking about with lengthening, posture. Now, when people say posture, it has like a posture, it, sit up straight, stand up straight, don't slouch. That is true. This is bad posture, you know. Slouching with your shoulders like this is bad. Uh, and people always say, stand up straight. And it feels uncomfortable, but that is one aspect of it. But really what I want to talk about more is symmetry. Um, uh, like to have your body symmetrical when you're playing the drums or when you're sitting at a desk, or when you're standing or when you're driving is something we can aim for, for which we can aim. So uh, let's see. Yeah, think about it like, like our bodies are actually not quite symmetrical. Our organs are a little out of, out of whack. We have a heart on one side. One of our lungs is bigger than the other. Our liver is on one side. Um, so we're actually, if, if you analyze it, your body is actually a little bit crooked already. And then if you put things like a backpack on and heavy clothes and boots, and then you're, you're walking all day through an airport or whatever, your, your body just slowly gets pulled out of whack and, it, and the muscles in your body stress extra hard because they're pulling to try to make you, you upright. So if we can get into the habit of doing things symmetrically, uh, standing straight, not standing straight like, like this, but actually not doing this, not doing this, not standing on one hip like this. You know, I do that all the time. When you're sitting down, I like to sit down and I kind of lean back this way if you catch yourself doing that, try to sit straight, you know, uh, with your both butt cheeks, both shoulder blades on the on the back of the chair or whatever. When I drive, you know, try to drive both hands, both feet stretched out, not one tucked in behind the other like this, not sitting on one side of your back or whatever. These things, if you do this throughout the day, you magically see, wow, I'm starting to feel my back feels better, my back feels healthy. Um, and then you can do other things like stand up straight and don't slouch that stuff. Everyone's going to tell you that like roll your shoulders back or whatever. But what I think is a, is a, a better thing to shoot for is symmetry in your body, making sure you're not leaning to one side or the other, 
drum sets are actually made very asymmetrically. We're always, if you're a righty drummer, um, cool, man. So um, like you're always reaching with your right hand. If you're a righty drummer, I'm reaching for this hi-hat and my snare drum's here. I'm reaching for the ride cymbal. If I ever go to see a chiropractor, they're like, wow, your shoulder blades are so out of whack. Your right shoulder blades, has all these muscles and your left shoulder blade doesn't. I'm like, yeah, it's because I'm a drummer and I'm basically doing this throughout the day. Every now and then my arms do that, but it's a lot of this. So we're trying to combat that with, uh, with um, just making sure that everything we do, we're building our bodies symmetrically. So just keep that in mind. Also our feet, we're doing so much with our right bass drum, so little with our left foot on the hi-hat if you're a righty drummer, uh, that our hips start to get a little out of whack. The muscles in our thighs start to get a little out of whack. So we have to do things to combat that, uh, once again, to be symmetrical so you have a healthy body as you get older. All right, let's move on to number eight. And thanks everyone for um, writing in. I appreciate the comments. Breathe, breathe. Now, um, a lot of people talk about meditation. Uh, and then some people shy away from that saying, I can never meditate or I don't have the concentration to do that or it takes too long or whatever. So I'm going to make this even easier. Don't even worry about meditating. Just think about breathing from time to time. Think about breathing uh, whenever you feel uh, stressed out, whenever you feel super angry, like you're about to shout at someone, whenever you feel nervous. You have butterflies in your stomach or your teeth are chattering or something. Uh, when you have anxiety or you're anxious, um, when you are super hyper and you need to calm down, when you are super sleepy and you need to wake up, it's weird. This, this actually works for a number of reasons. Um, but uh, just taking a gigantic gulp of oxygen often fixes many problems in our body. And uh, I actually even play this game with my son. We do it throughout the day. Like he wants to do something. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. First thing, let's take one breath. And I actually call it with him. I call it the um, one big Darth Vader breath. So if you think about it, Darth Vader goes. <laughs> Ridiculous. I know I'm an adult and I'm doing this, but I do it with him because actually having the sound there helps you realize what you're doing. If you just go quietly, are you breathing or not? You might not know, you might not notice. But if you do that silly sound, you'll know you're breathing. But I don't do, I actually do it in my nose, out my mouth, so I do this. So it's kind of like a half Darth Vader, Darth Vader breath. So I, I soak in oxygen through my nose like it's a giant vacuum cleaner. And then I exhale through my mouth like I'm Darth Vader. So you could be a drummer. You could be playing on the Jimmy Fallon show. And you're sitting there on stage and you see... Um, Questlove over there watching you and you're about to go on they're like okay here we go we're on in 10 9 you're like oh my god I'm getting so nervous hold on hold on ready three two one and then you you blaze you sound amazing uh it's a great way to just cut through whatever your body is um is is doing whatever little overreaction it is if I'm tired, sometimes I'm tired and I can't stop yawning, I actually take a deep breath. And that actually sometimes fixes that. <sighs> you know, if I'm re feeling really hyper, I had too much coffee and I'm like, oh my God, I need to relax. I'm just freaking out here. Then I, I take a deep breath. If I'm feeling depressed, if I'm, I don't know, it, whatever extreme your body is going through, try that. It seems to fix a lot of problems without having to take tons of medication. So this is, you can get into mindfulness, meditation, all these other things are great too. But if you're not down with that, this is something natural that you can do very easily. 
when you're about to play the drums, take one to three deep breaths, you're good to go. If you're in traffic and you're about to run someone else off the road, stop and say, hmm, maybe I'll just take a deep breath before I run that guy off the road and then I'll decide if it's worth it. Uh, let's move on. We'll go to number nine, sleep. The importance of sleep. This is, I will sound a little hypocritical talking about this topic because I'm a terrible sleeper. I used to pride myself on being able to function really well on two to four hours of sleep a night. And I'd go weeks like that. And I'd be super productive. And I'm like, the world sleeps too much. You don't need it. And then at some certain point, like maybe three months down the line, I would get really sick. <laughs> so, and uh, as the older I get, I realize that that's you, your body actually needs to shut down from time to time to fix itself, or do little repairs. Uh, your brain does and your cells do in your body. So um, the recommendations, some doctors say six to eight hours, other doctors say eight to 10, 10 hours a night. Um, I don't think there's a magic number that works for everyone. I think you just have to sleep a chunk of time every day and try to keep it similar from night to night. So if you are going to go to bed from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., try to keep it that way, that amount of time and that start and end time, if you can, uh, as much as possible. Sometimes it's midnight to 7, sometimes it's 10.30 to 6.30, but something around there. The same length of time, more or less, give or take two hours, and the start and finish times, you know, within two hours. Um, it's not that easy if you're a, a musician that travels a lot, goes to different time zones. So you're going from the East Coast to the West Coast, or you're going from the West Coast to Australia or the East Coast to Germany or something. Uh, I'm talking from East and West Coast as if you're living in the United States. You could be tuning in from someplace else, and I apologize. So <laughs> California or uh, New York or something like that and going over to Germany. So then you have to come up with your own system to battle jet lag and all those problems. I, I travel a lot, uh, at least I used to before this quarantine, and now I just live in this room here. But I used to travel every week to a different time zone. And I had to come up with systems that would help me adjust my body to multiple time zones and so I didn't die. And one of the things that I did was I made sure that whatever airplane I got on, I would you know, maybe read a book, watch a movie, and then crash. I would get at least four hours of sleep on whatever airplane I was taking, whether the flight was eight hours long or 14 hours long, I have to get some sleep, you know, so, and I'm not a good airplane sleeper. So I actually got some medication from my doctor that would help me sleep. So i pop a pill, crash, and then I land in this new time zone and I go through customs and I get to the hotel. And then I actually, people think it's crazy, but even if I'm jet lagged, I go to the gym because I kind of want to reset my body to that time zone. And then I go to bed uh, at probably around 9.30, 10 o'clock the night that I arrive and then try to sleep until the morning. And then I'm good for that week or however many days I'm in that time zone. So, but the things I don't do are I, I don't stay up the entire uh, airplane and watch Transformers 1 through 17. Uh, and I don't get to the hotel and take a nap immediately at 2 p.m. or 4 p.m. or something because that will screw me up totally. Um, so getting sleep on the airplane and then making sure you stay up till a normal bedtime in the new time zone really helped reset me to uh, what, wherever I'm going to be. Anyway, backtracking to the importance of sleep. So um, yeah, it's, it's good for you. Don't listen to the younger self that used to be proud that he could only sleep two hours a night. I now am fully on board with the idea of getting a decent chunk of sleep every night. And another thing, uh, although I love coffee and green tea, I try to cut myself off around 4 or 5 p.m. every day. No more caffeine for the rest of the day. So I'll have maybe uh, an espresso at uh, 7 in the morning and maybe a green tea at 
1 p.m. Then I kind of make sure nothing after that, nothing around dinner time or beyond. Uh, that way we're getting all those kinds of stimulants out of our system. Okay, let's move on. We'll move on to, yeah, number 10, moderation. Moderation, what does moderation mean? Uh, moderation is all the stuff I've been saying. Don't feel like you have to go like a thousand percent in any direction. You know, um, obviously too much of a bad thing is a bad thing, but also often too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Uh, I say drink a lot of water, but if you drink too much water, you can actually die. That's actually, you can look it up. If you drink too much water, you can die from uh, flooding your body with water. It has happened to marathon runners and things like that. Uh, I say eat spinach because it's good for you. It's a superfood. But spinach in gigantic quantities is a poison. There's actually poison on the leaves. It's a self-defense thing. So if you eat tons and tons and tons, you have to eat a lot. But you have to eat tons of spinach. It could actually make you sick. So it's weird that uh, extremes can be bad for you. And that's difficult for me to say because I love pushing everything to an extreme. I love seeing how far I can do this, how long I can do this, how difficult I can push this. It's it's a weird uh, fixation of mine. And I have to also learn that uh, the Buddha, if you read that stuff, says that you know you have to seek the middle path. If you take a guitar and you detune the strings super loosely, and you play it, it goes And then you say, well, that doesn't work. And you tune it as tight as it goes, they all snap. So what they said in, in uh, the ancient writings is the guitar only sounds good and you can play music when you tune it medium where it's supposed to uh, ring harmoniously. So the body and life kind of works the same way. Uh, you have to find the middle path with a lot of the things you're doing. Um, extremes can be harmful and sometimes dangerous and um, but being average is also kind of boring. So you want to find like, how can you push things to a challenging part, uh, uh, a challenging level, but not going so far that it's harmful. So that's the, that's the thing. And that's the game. That's the game. If you're an athlete or you're a musician or you're an artist or whatever you do is how are we finding that challenging spot where we're improving every day but we're not going so far that you're injuring yourself or burning out or whatever. That is what moderation is. We're seeking that level, that perfect uh, wave that we're surfing where we're, we're improving and pushing and challenging, but not crashing. Um, that's all I got for you. I hope these 10 tips that uh, we talked about, you can take a little bit of this and this improves your your daily life and your future routines. And um, yeah, oh, you know what? I see a little note here from my friend from DW. If anyone has any questions before we wrap up, feel free to shoot them in. She probably sent that note in 40 minutes ago and I ignored it. I apologize, but I chug a glass of water with a tablespoon of Bragg's apple cider. Oh, yeah. Okay, good question. So apple cider vinegar is uh, something that people drink now, a tablespoon of vinegar. I used to drink, uh, Koreans love to do this brown rice vinegar. I'm half Korean. Uh, it's like a detox for your liver and your kidneys, vinegar. It's weird, but yeah, if you put it in things like juice, you don't taste it that much. Um, again, not 100% sure if it works, but it's a theory that a lot of people do is to put a spoonful of apple cider vinegar or brown rice vinegar into your beverage and it's a detox for your liver. Um, the reason why I say room temperature is, once again, this is a Korean thing. They believe that it's better for your digestion not to drink cold fluids. Cold fluids mess with your metabolism somehow. Cold fluid is great if you're out gardening all day in the sun and you're like, man, I am overheating. I need a glass of lemonade, freezing cold lemonade. But in general, beverages apparently are easier to digest and better for our um, metabolism if they're room temperature or warm. So if it's not disgusting, some beverages taste terrible warm. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know, but uh, if you can stomach it, a room temperature or warm glass of something is 
supposedly better for you. And uh, does anyone else have any other questions? I would gladly answer them. I am not a doctor. I can just tell you what I uh, have read and learned. Oh, these are small things, but a big deal. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad uh, you're welcome, Stefan. And I'm totally here to help. And uh, what's up? What's up? What's up, guys? And um, this is fun for me. So honestly, I was talking to DW about this, that I talk about this all the time anyway with all my musician buddies. We're always uh, on a tour bus or in a dressing room and they're like, we're talking about you know, stretching, exercising, hitting the gym, whatever, doing martial arts or um, what do you eat? And is this good for you? Is this bad for you? Did you read that article on this or, you know? So I'm glad that I could share a little bit of what I've been uh, picking up along the way. You got it, Nick. And if, uh, if that's everything, then I think we can wrap it up with, uh, you can catch me on Instagram, Twitter. Here's all my little handles. That's my website, Brendan Buckley. You can write me there if you'd like. Uh, we have another episode next week, same time, same bat channel with Chris Turner. And, oh, the Drum Network, DW Drums Drum Network. It's a little part of their website, which is dedicated to education. That's This show's on there. The party playlist is on there. So you can you can find this on you know YouTube and Facebook, but you can also go directly to their website and go to the Drum Network tab. And I think that's it. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, for DW, thanks to DW for inviting me. And I hope some of this stuff helps and you're not bored out of your minds. <laughs>